Want to go status? T minus 30 seconds. The morning may end. TPA script running. Second stage LH2 securing started. Ready for launch? Ready to embark on a national security mission for the United States of America. New Sock 92. Range green. Igniter is armed. Rofi ignition. KBU. Four. Three. And lift off. The morning mayhem is on. The morning mayhem is pre recorded and for entertainment purposes only. Let's jam here on this Wednesday morning, everybody, as uh, we are getting a day closer to a Friday, day closer to a weekend. Merritt's body's been found, public told, before the family could even relay the news. Washtenaw County Coroner has embalmers, funeral directors, and funeral home license revoked by the state board. And what is on the Washtenaw County primary ballot? We've got the answers to that. And also have the Arkansas Voters Guide. Rutledge urges Federal Trade Commission to authorize the tractor supply and Orsland Farm and Home merger. And what is a county constable? What exactly does a county constable do? And Sarah Sanders raises another $601,000 in the Arkansas governor race. And, well, we got a lot more on all that to talk about here as well as we kick off this Wednesday morning. News Talk 92 KBE, the news and talk of South Arkansas. News Talk 92 KBEU, the news and talk of South Arkansas. Good morning, everybody. Here on this here Wednesday morning, it's 68 degrees outside with a high of 89. Feels like 71 out there, so the humidity is just a tad bit up, but not too shabby out there. And, of course, yesterday, you know, the temperature was just scalding. I don't know if you noticed it, though, but it was like 110 degrees outside yesterday. And uh, I was like, oh, my gosh, it was like so hot. I mean, oh, why is it so hot? So I called time and temperature just to verify, you know, how hot it really is. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, May 17th. Morrison Pharmacy time, 445. Current temperature 110 degrees. 110. Mostly sunny today, high 88. Mostly cloudy tonight, lows around. But it was supposed to be a high of 88. High low 90. See, so there was supposed to be a high of 88, high of 89 today, high of 88 yesterday. But, uh, yeah, you call time and temperature is 110. You heard it right there. And I was like, well, that explains why it's so balmy outside. <laughs> yeah, it's 110. It was scorching out there yesterday. Boy, I tell you what. Woo. <laughs> I was wondering why I felt like I just stepped out the shower. Mercy me. Just after four, though. Uh, Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department announced that um, that they had found Merritt's body on the river. And finally, you know, the family and friends and everybody, and even the community can also have some closure on this. But um, there's a little complaint, though, that um, it's um, that, um, you know, it's uh, kind of annoying that um, the um, where to go, where to go, where to go, where to go, that uh, the public found out about it before the family could relay anything. And. Doggone it. Where'd it go? Because I had it right there, and now it's just gone. Well, that's annoying, because I just had it. It was sitting right there. There it is. Okay. Cheese and rice. All right. So... Brittany Merritt had posted on Facebook saying they found Mark Merritt since the Camden News told people before we could tell the family and then tag somebody in there. So uh, they're saying, I guess they're saying, like, thanks a lot. We wanted to uh, break the news to a family. And, well, the paper beat everybody to it, even beat us to it as well, because I was cutting news for 5 o'clock when I found out. 
Or no, I'd already cut news for 5 o'clock. I was wrapping stuff up. And uh, so, yeah, just after 4 p.m., they uh, they announced that um, they had found merit. So now everybody can uh, get some peace on that. Uh, another thing that made it into the news as well, which uh, I was kind of curious, how's that going to work out? Since um, now that they found merit, somebody has to come and claim you. And that would typically be the coroner. The coroner would stop by. And uh, claim everything and, you know, uh, get everything taken care of. The stuff that corners do. But thing is, though, is the Washington County Corner got their embalmers, funeral directors, and funeral home license revoked by the state board. Now, granted, the corner position is an elected position. And, uh, you know, back home, it's typically you got to have some kind of medical degree or something to be able to announce people dead. Like, you have to have, a, I guess, a formal education to tell people that, uh, other people, that this person is dead. Whereas, uh, you know, anybody else, you know, you can sit there and check a pulse and, uh, you know, you listen for breathing. There's no, uh, you know, I mean, you can look at a person and go, yeah, that person's dead. But you're not a medical expert and you're not trained as a medical person, so you can't do that. So where I come from, usually it's typically somebody that um, has some kind of medical training. A doctor of some sort uh, would be the coroner. Um, here, though, it's it's a little different. And I don't know if it's just that uh, you have to be attached somehow to a funeral home to be a coroner or how that works out. But uh, it seems like those that I've seen run for coroner are typically attached to a funeral home. So I'm not exactly sure how that works out, if that's even a, a requirement or something. Anyhow, getting to the point, though, the State Board of Embalmers, uh, Camden News is reporting this one, saying that the State Board of Embalmers, Funeral Directors, Cemeteries, and Funeral Services voted unanimously on Tuesday to revoke the Embalmers License, Funeral Directors License, and Funeral Home Establishment License of Sylvester Smith Jr. and Williams Funeral Home of Camden during a hearing concerning a recent failed inspection. So uh, during the testimony on the board, or to the board, Josh Taylor, inspector investigator for the board, stated that on November 22nd of 2021, he inspected Williams Funeral Home on a follow-up inspection after uh, infractions found back in September of 2020. So according to records obtained by uh, Camden News, infractions recorded in 2020 included the lack of posted hours of operation, Non-compliance with preparation room requirements, failure to maintain the establishment, such as to ensure no hazards are presented to the health, safety, and welfare of the public, and lack of price cards in the selection room. So, in an August 2021 meeting, the board allowed Smith to enter into an agreement to bring the business into compliance within 90 days. Uh, Taylor stated during the testimony to the board on Tuesday, he said, I observed a funeral home that we would consider substandard. So Taylor further stated that the business was filthy on the inside and out. It appears that the funeral home had been unkept and in disarray for quite some time, he noted. His report also supplied photographs of the inside and outside of the home as well. So the story continues on where I just lost where I was because I had to scroll down and and... And now I can't, I just completely lost my place. Okay, there we go. Taylor also stated that he did not observe any commercial biohazards, waste disposal systems in the room used to prepare bodies for funerals. He continued on saying, when we look at the biohazard waste compliance, we all know to operate a funeral home, that's an OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration requirement and the health department, some of their st- statute states that in Arkansas, you do have to maintain a record and usually with other biohazard waste systems, there's an electronics record that's maintained and you have to have a paper trail from when that biohazard company picks it up to the day it's incinerated and they send you an email stating that it's been incinerated and not having that is a huge issue. And just looking at these photographs, in my opinion, I don't even see how this justifies being a funeral establishment. Board Chairman Billy Kurt stated during the hearing, That's who said that the board voted to affirm the allegations and found that, according to Taylor's report, the preparation room, selection room and front yard of the funeral home were dirty and cluttered. The cluttered uh, the clutter in the section selection room and preparation room presented a potential trip hazard. An exit was blocked in the preparation room by clutter and debris, and there was no casket price list or outer burial price list. 
and as such, respondents did not successfully pass the inspection that occurred. So according to Arkansas Code 17-29-11, authorizes the board to issue letters of reprimand or caution, refuse to issue a renew issue or renew a license, suspend, suspend or revoke any license for the practice of embalming or funeral directing. And then in addition to revoking the license, the board also made a motion to submit the findings to the Federal Trade Commission. So, ooh, so let's see, where did I leave off here? Smith is also an elected coroner of the Washita County and was not present at the meeting. So Smith Jr. explained that there was a miscommunication about the time of the hearing. His son, Sylvester Smith III, an attorney, said that he was a uh, double book Tuesday, but plans to appeal the board's decision. But uh, from what I would think, there's also working on, um, you know, bringing merit back too. So uh, the counsel for the board, uh, Amanda Gibson, noted that Smith could file an administrative appeal in Washtenaw County Circuit Court where a judge could reverse the decision, uphold the decision, or send the case back to the board. So Smith Jr. said, I guess because no one showed up, the board felt like it did what they needed to do. So really dealing with the uh, with the age of the facility, they want us to modernize or whatever. It does not have anything to do with any kind of missing funds or anything. This has something to do with some of the things the facility is needing to be upgrading. And uh, we are planning on moving to another facility in the near future, Smith Jr. added. Uh, he asked the public to have patience and understand why they took action the way they did. And when you have a meeting scheduled and the subject of the hearing doesn't even show up, that's kind of like uh, you're just ignoring the complaint. And that wasn't the case. Uh, I've had a license for over 40 years. I've never had an infraction complaint or anything against my license by the board. So um, and then uh, in the story, you can see where some pictures were posted and stuff of debris and clutter and things like that. So, yeah. So that's where that's at. And uh, hopefully uh, that'll that'll get that taken care of. Um, so, of course, Washita County Sheriff's deputies recovered the remains of Mark Merritt. He'd been missing. Uh, so this would be like, oh, shoot. I'm probably going to get the timeline wrong. But what, two and a half weeks, I'm thinking. Two and a half, pushing on three. This weekend should be should have been. If we, if we made it to this Saturday, I think it should have been three weeks. So I, I'm just guesstimating at it because I can't remember. Um, uh, okay, so April 30th. All right, so that makes more sense there. April 30th. Hang on. April 30th. So this is what Google's great for. Uh, since April 30, 2022. So we're looking at, okay, 17 days. So just, uh, just a tad over two weeks, so 17 days. Uh, since since the incident happened, and so let's see. So there was that, and that was uh, when they uh, him and his wife had got thrown out of the boat. From what one of the other deputies was telling me too was that uh, they were actually on their way <coughs> to go find fish at this place called Mud Lake, and that's uh, uh, part of the river that fills up when the river swells and floods, and it fills up this area, and the fish get trapped in there, and then when the river starts receding. Those fish get trapped in there, and then supposedly it's like, uh, you know, pardon the phrase, but, you know, fishing in a barrel. So they were on their way to that, and then while they were, they launched from Sandy Beach, and then while they were coming down, they passed the uh, electric plant facility, and then um, hit a a large tree that was in the river that was as debris, and uh, they both launched in there. Uh, The wife being able to swim to shore, uh, Merritt not so much, uh, ended up not making it over to the other side. Hang on, I've got to take this break. Uh, We'll continue this on the other side of this and uh, continue on some other things as well. Uh, All that and more News Talk 92, KBEU, the news and talk of South Arkansas. News Talk 92, KBEU, the news and talk of South Arkansas. As we are coming up on the bottom of the six, 67 degrees outside, high of 89 today. Feels like 69 out there. It's dropped a little bit. It was 71 when we came into the studios, but uh, the temperature was a little bit lower too. 
So uh, the temperature, well, no, I'm yeah, the temperature was lower. So the temperature's going up, but to feel like it's going down. So as the two get closer and closer together, that that should be a good thing, because then that means the uh, humidity out there is not as bad as it could be. When you start getting that distance between uh, the current temperature and the feel like, and there's a great gap between the two, that's when you start getting in trouble there with that humidity. So just before the break, we were kind of recapping what happened out there on April 30th on the river. And from what I was told from the uh, sheriff's department was that uh, Mark Merritt and his wife got out there on the lake. They They launched from Sandy Beach. And they were in one of those boats that has the motor attached to the back there with the little handle lever thing, you know, so you can pan left and right and you kind of twist the knob there and it causes it to uh, accelerate and stuff and things like that. You know, I'm not a boat guy, but uh, you know, I kind of get the image there of what uh, he was describing. Anyhow, so she's on the front of the boat. He's in the back of the boat with the motor and they're putting along, put, 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 going down the river. And then supposedly they uh, strike a huge log tree in the river and that causes them to uh, jolt the boat. And then she launches into the river and then he falls into the river as well. But the thing is, though, was that she manages to swim to shore and not sure what happened to Mark. Now, uh, it was speculated that uh, it could have been that he may have gotten injured or something like that, got knocked unconscious and uh, wasn't able to uh, come back up. Anyhow, there were life jackets on the boat, but nobody was wearing them at the time, uh, according to uh, sheriff's deputies. And that's where we were at. So then from there, uh, it was a matter of uh, just doing re- uh, search and recovery and trying to see um, uh, what we could do and what we could find and, of course, get some closure out there. So that was uh, with Merritt. So um, they've been combing the river repeatedly. And uh, the thing, though, with them that they were working against is uh, the weather. So every time um, they'd get out there on the river, you'd have thunderstorms come in. In fact, Camden uh, Police Department had the same problem when they were looking for Cooper. Was uh, These storms would just keep rolling in. But um, with uh, the Sheriff's Department, though, theirs was a little worse because the river had swollen up so much that it just got to the point to where even with uh, the sun out there shining and everything, they just had to abandon their, their efforts because the river was just too dangerous to be on. Uh, you're out there on a boat. You're, you know, you don't want the first responders to having to be, resp- uh, you know, recovered by other first responders. So you don't want to put them in jeopardy either. So with the river swollen like that, they pretty much had to call and back off as well, and then just wait for the levels to go down. So the levels rising and everything really worked against the river, uh, or worked against them. The way it was explained to me is typically, <clears throat> and and ideally is what you want, is when something like this happens that um, the person falls in. And then, of course, you know, over the time of days, because uh, at the time when this happened, the river was at 28 feet. And when I caught up with them, the river was down at 21 feet. But the problem was, is we had more rain, more water coming in, which would then raise it back up to 28 feet. That goes against everything that you're trying to do. Ideally, textbook, from what I was told, is what you want. is somebody falls into the river, and then what's going to happen is the river's going to be receding over time, which then, of course, you know, causes the shoreline to widen further apart because the river is getting more and more narrow. So that actually helps your search efforts in trying to find someone. But the problem is in this one is the river keeps rising. So then is what happens is that now you've got the river swelling from bank to bank. And then the uh, the river banks get closer and closer together because uh, either that or just basically disappear because the river will breach the banks and then go up on the land. And so then that really widens your search area and really makes it more complicated. So uh, working with that against them, um, it really uh, uh, really made it harder for them to be able to uh, do what they need to do and safely as well. So, of course, you know, this is the third drowning on the Ouachita River this year. Uh, John David Robertson had been reporting missing back on Tuesday, January 18th, along with his wife, Sarah. And the person who reported the incident said around 4 p.m. on that day while fishing, uh, Roberts had approached him saying that people were out to kill him. And uh, that's what Norwood said that was reported to him at the time. And then uh, Norwood said that the man who reported it said he saw Roberts get into a boat and then basically just fall out in the middle of the river. The man went to retrieve the boat but never saw Roberts resurface either. So then deputies had begun searching their daily with sonar but uh, failed to recover the body until it resurfaced around 1.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 15th, near the area where Roberts and, uh, had been reported to fall in. So Roberts had been found pretty close to where he had fallen in. And... 
Cooper had been found about 20 feet or so from where they saw him fall in. But uh, this one, uh, let's see, let's see the map here. About 21.6 miles down the river. Uh, and that has a lot to do with uh, the hit with the river just swollen and, and uh, rising and lowering and, uh, you know, the current getting strong again. Because, of course, you know, when the river swells up, the current gets stronger. And then when it uh, recedes, then it gets, you know, not as strong. So 21.6 miles down the river according to the sheriff's department. And then uh, that was, and then back on March 28th, Camden police and fire department responded around 5 PM. That was a Sunday to report of a person in distress in the river near the river walk upon arrivals. Uh, officer saw the person in uh, obvious distress about a hundred yards from the river bank. So, and, and then he was found, I think within 20 feet of where he was last seen. So, um, yeah, so there's the third, and uh, you just got to be careful out there on that river. Just cannot stress that enough. I know we keep telling people to be safe out there, and you know, use use your life jackets and stuff like that, and and then we you know end up talking about another statistic, which we don't want people becoming numbers, but um, we got to do what we got to do and uh, stay safe out there, out there on the river and stuff. All right, I've got to take this break. Bottom of the six coming up for you right now on News Talk ninety two KBU, the news and talk of South Arkansas. News Talk 92 KBEU, the news, the talk of South Arkansas. Coming out of the bottom of the sixth there, there's 67 degrees outside. High of 89. Supposed to be breaking a record today, too. I think we're supposed to be breaking 93 for a new record high today. Wrapping up there, our discussion on uh, finding merit, getting some closure here on the river. And one family member upset that uh, the Camden News had released this story before they could tell the other family members and stuff so uh, they found out through the paper instead of through other family members unfortunately though it does happen sometimes um, of course you know man seriously though, thoughts and prayers out there to uh, families and friends and the community and hope that uh, you know uh, peace is brought upon the family and just cannot stress enough about water safety because you've got to know that uh, you know this weekend or not supposedly this weekend but next weekend is Labor Day weekend it's the unofficial start of summer which means everybody's going to be hitting the waters and the waterways and stuff lakes rivers ponds kiddie pools whatever there is going to be some kind of pool of water that is built up, and people are going to be getting into that pool of water. You know what? Throw bathtubs in there as well. It's a pool of water. And the thing is, though, is that sometimes we just lose our sense or common sense, and we just get stupid, and we do stupid things, and sometimes we get lucky and uh, manage to walk away from it. Other times, not so much, and then we have stories like this to tell. So cannot stress it enough as we are getting into the unofficial start of summer to just please be safe out there on the waterways and uh, use your life preservers and jackets and vests and all those other kind of things and just be safe out there and get back to us on Monday morning. Just cannot stress that enough. So um, we've got uh, the uh, this thing here, the stuff with the... Um, <laughs> I'm sitting there staring right at it. I can't even tell you what it is. Primary election. I'm sitting there staring. I'm holding it in my hand, and I'm like, this thing here that, uh, you know, uh, it's a uh, piece of paper. It's got uh, stuff on it. No, it's the ArkansasVotersGuide.com. Uh, go there, and you can get exactly what I have physically in my hands. Uh, it's just you'll have a digital copy. And this thing is great, too. Um, if you're one of those kind of people that just vote straight ticket, you don't care. As long as they got a D next to their name, you're voting for them. Or as long as they got an R next to their name, you're voting for them. You don't care. As long as it's got that letter of preference next to their name, that's how you vote. This segment is not for you. So you could probably go off somewhere else and, I don't know, go listen to 195 for uh, for about the next uh, 16 minutes and then come back. Actually, 16, that would be uh, about 14 now. <laughs> So go listen, go listen somewhere else. This segment is not for you. 
And if you're listening on the podcast, just fast forward 16 minutes because this segment is still not for you either. It's if you if that's how you vote a street ticket. What this is, and you can get this at ArkansasVotersGuide.com. It is presented uh, by the uh, Family Council, which is the same Family Council that gave you the how-to guide on how to destroy an entertainment district when it comes to your town. And what a great job that they did. So when you open it up and everything, or if you've got the electronic version, what you'll find is you'll find everybody that's running for an office in Arkansas. It's great, 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 great. And then it also has on there uh, your candidates, what they're running for, what party they represent, and where do they stand on the issues. Now, this is perfect because in that way you can go through and find out who it is that supports the things that you believe in and aligns with your beliefs. And then that way you have now created yourself a a, a to-do list and you know who to vote for and who not to vote for. So that way you can actually vote, vote. You can make an educated vote instead of just going, eh, you know, I'll just do straight ticket, all Republican, all Democrat. So, uh, and that's what I encourage the most. I, I just, I, people who straight, who vote straight just uh, annoy me because it's like, it's, you know, you got some guys in there that are, are in your party that are doing things that aren't, you know, that align with your party. And then, cause I mean, I voted for Democrats that, uh, those tip particular uh, candidates did something that I, that I was in support of. Now, it may have not been a Republican or a Democrat thing, uh, and there's some of them that have gone against the party line, and I rewarded them with my vote. So, uh, you know, I figure, well, if you're going to be doing that kind of stuff, then uh, you're the kind of person that I'm going to keep voting for. So in our federal races, that's uh, people who are running for U.S. Senate. You got Jack Foster in there, Natalie James, uh, Dan Whitfield, Jack uh, Barquette, John Bozeman, Heath Loftus, and Jan Morgan. Now, uh, Foster is a Democrat. James is a Democrat. Whitfield's a Democrat. Bar- Baquette is a Republican. Bozeman is a Republican. Loftus is a Republican. And Morgan is a Republican. Jan Morgan is the one who uh, ran for uh, governor against, uh, 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 um, what's his name? Hutchison. I'm sitting there trying to think. And what? BB, no. Huckabee, uh, uh, no. No, no, no. It was uh, Asa. I'll eventually get it right. Then we got the issues. How, where do they stand on abortion? Where do they stand on a balanced budget? Where do they stand on elections? You know, like allowing churches to endorse candidates and by abolishing the IRS restriction known as the Johnson Amendment. Uh, also, the amending the Federal Civil Rights Act of 1964 to add sexual orientation and gender identity to the list of protected classes. Where do they stand on that? Immigration, building a wall or similar barriers. Where do they stand on that? Guns, renewing the 1994 federal assault weapons ban. Where do they stand on that? We saw what that did. That's how we got Columbine. Uh, foreign policy, where do they stand on that? And tech and social media, where do they stand on that? And so you could go through this, and then you could see where each one of them stand on that. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole list and tell you who stands on what, but um, you could definitely see where they are. So if these issues are important to you, then you can vote on the candidate that best aligns with your beliefs and what issues that you support, instead of just being, you know what, I'm just going to vote all Republican, I'm going to vote all Democrat, and forget it. So uh, and then that way, because that I mean, you're making a bigger difference if you're actually putting people, you know, key players in the right spots, you know, aces in their places versus if you just fill the team and go, you know, what, we got a football team to hell with it. <laughs> Let them play football. Then you got the U.S. House. So you got Crawford in there, Republican. You've got Shackelford, Republican, Smith, Republican, Hill, French Hill, Republican, Reynolds, Republican, uh, Coomer, Republican and Womack, Republican. So it looks like uh, for the House, everybody's Republican and uh, they're uh, there's no Democrats running against them. And then, of course, the same issues, abortion, balanced budget, elections, immigration, guns, COVID, foreign policy, tech and social media. Then we get into uh, the uh, races for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, and then the state senate. Oh, my gosh. And boy, 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 is there a list of state senators on there. So for your governor, we'll just cover that real quick because, you know, that's a short list. You got Anthony Bland in there, the Democrat that's running for that. Chris Jones, who uh, seems to be taking the lead at the moment, Democrat. Jay Martin, Democrat. James Russ Russell, Democrat. And then you got Sufa Mays, Democrat. And then on the other side, you've just got Sarah Huckabee Sanders for Republican. And then Francis Doc Washburn for Republican. And then these 
Uh, these issues are a little bit different. Uh, some of them are the same as the first ones I told you. You know, you got issues on abortion. Where do they stand? COVID, marijuana, legalizing recreational marijuana if you wanna, education, critical race theory, withholding state funds from any public school that promotes a critical race theory. Then you've got elections, which is requiring absentee ballots to be uh, notarized in order to be counted in an election. Then you got uh, issues on privacy, nursing homes, and marriage, making it more difficult to obtain a divorce by eliminating general uh, entities uh, for grounds of divorce. Uh, into, what is that? In, in gen- I can't. Wow. Oh, I'm actually ashamed to say this because I have to put glasses on so I can actually see this. Oh, my gosh. And he says uh, ground for divorce. Cheese and rice. Wow. Yes, yes, I know. I'm getting up there to be 50 years old. I turned 50 in September. And, uh, yeah, I, sometimes I actually have to put these glasses on to... It's an embarrassing moment. Anyhow, so those are the issues, where they stand, and that covers your governor. That also covers your lieutenant governor, who happens to be uh, Chris Baquette, Republican, uh, Greg Bledsoe, Republican, Jason Rapor, Republican, Leslie Rutledge, a Republican, uh, Dolly Webb, Republican, and Joseph Wood, Republican. So it looks like uh, all the Republicans are running for LG there. Attorney General up for grabs. Griffin, who is now currently the LG, is running for AG. And then Leon James Jr., also Republican, running for uh, the LG. Now, your Secretary of State, currently Thurston's in there. He's a Republican. Annabeth uh, Gorman, Democrat, running for that. Same issues. Uh, you know, where do they stand on all this stuff that we just listed? Joshua Price, Democrat. Thor- Thurston, who's... Um, in there right now, and then Williams, a Republican, also running. Treasurer Mark Lowry, uh, which I believe is currently the incumbent. Is that right? I think so. And uh, yeah, I think it's Lowry. And then Matthew Pish, a Republican as well. Then you got the state Senate. Oh boy, oh boy, do you have the state Senate? Woo! You got Beth Calloway in there running as Republican, James McMenus. Oh yeah, James McMenus, he was just in here yesterday. <laughs> cutting up his stuff right now for um, for his ad. He just put an ad in and I uh, got to voice his ad. I was like, hey, I know that name for some reason. Of course I know that name. Same issues on this. As you look at the sheet, you got the same issues uh, that we explained with governor and everything. Where do they stand on those issues? So your choices are with the issues, either the candidate is going to be in support of it, undecided or opposed. That's the only choices you have there. So when you look at this, chart and everything, then you can see where they stand on those issues. If they're for it, if they again it, or they don't know yet what they want to think about it yet. So uh, let's see, some ones that we know here. Uh, let's see, we can know that guy there. So uh, yeah, we ended with uh, McManus, uh, Beth Galloway, we know her. Uh, let's see, uh, those guys are way up north, so those have nothing to do with us, and we're not interested in you people because y'all are way up north. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, wait, who was that? Was that U.S. Senate? Yeah, no, that's State Senate. Yeah, okay, so that's State Senate. Oh, yeah, okay, all right, State Senate continues here. <laughs> so, let's see. Um. Wow, Okay. Oh, because wait a minute, that's state senate. That's why I'm looking for certain names. I'm like, well, I don't recognize any of these names on here because uh, um, the people I'm thinking of are actually in the House, not the Senate. Okay, there's Stone, Matt Stone. He's running out of Camden. So uh, that's for state senate. Republican. Um, see, I don't know where their areas are, though. Because Callaway's out of El Dorito. McMenus is out of El Dorito. Uh, Stone shows to be out of Camden. Uh, Beckham, Republican, shows to be out of McNeil. Crowell, Republican, out of Magnolia. And then we've got, uh, those are all up north again, up there. I feel like I'm over here reading the paper. It's a big spread. It's a nice spread, though, and uh, it's a great sheet to have. Uh, get you a copy, and that way you can go armed to the uh, bowling, uh, bowling, the bowling alley. No, the voting booth. <laughs> and that way you got your hit list of who you're taking out in this next election. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I don't recognize any of those names there. So, nope. 
All right, so the state house, we have anybody in here that we recognize? Anyone? Anyone? It's a huge list. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people in here. Um, actually, I've got a copy of the ballot. That would greatly help out because uh, then then we know who was in uh, who we can vote for here in Washita County. Because there's the state house, um, yeah, and the state house. Boy, is the state house big, big, big. And the same thing, they got issues on where they stand on those: abortion, COVID, marriage, marijuana, education, critical race theory, election privacy, nursing homes, and marriage. And then. Yeah, and then there's all that there. So then is what they, oh, oh well, oh, okay. So then you got your Supreme Court on there as well. So uh, you got your voter's guide and everything. Um, this one is um, because it comes from the um, family council. Of course, it's going to be, uh, you know, geared towards uh, conservatives and uh, family values and things like that. So if you're not for family values, I mean, you, this probably isn't for you. But, I mean, you know what? Even if you're not for family values and, you know, you're a communist or anything like that, and uh, but you still like to vote. <laughs> I kid. I am communist, but I like to vote. Voting is good. <laughs> they make decision now. But um, <laughs> it's still very informative on everything that you need to know when you go to the booth. Whether you're a family hater or family supporter or whatever it is that you, uh, you're you into, uh, that this will cover for uh, any, any direction there. So there's that. And you can get a copy of that at ArkansasVotersGuide.com and uh, print you out a copy there. I've got a hard copy. I don't know where this came from, but I have it and uh, I like it and stuff. So I would rather use the hard copy than I would, you know, have a copy on my phone. Because in that way, you know, I can make notes and things like that and uh, mark up the paper and everything on what I, where I need to be and where I want to go and what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So there, there's that. Um, you might. No, probably not. I say that, but probably not. So, yeah, just go to the ArkansasVotersGuide.com, or if you need to, call 501-375-7000 and see if you can get you a hard copy that way. I'm not sure where this one came from. I just know that when it's election time, things start showing up. Uh, oh, oh, well, look at that. It's even got unopposed candidates as well. But I'm telling you, man, this thing has got a lot of information in here that um, you just would would really like to have if you are one of those people who like to vote educated and not blindly. Now, I'm not bashing on you if you b- vote blindly. If you're just straight ticket, I'm not bashing on you. I'm just saying that if you're someone like me who likes to be informed and when you go and pull the lever, that you know exactly why you're pulling that lever and not just doing it because, oh, that looks like an, I like that name. That's a nice wholesome name right there. And he's Republican or uh, he's Democrat. I like that. All right, I got to take this break. Be right back. News Talk 92, KBEU, the News and Talk of South Arkansas. News Talk 92, KBEU, the news to talk South Arkansas. Still the one right there, baby, as uh, we are encroaching the top of the hour here. Just got a few more minutes before we wrap this hour up, get into the 7 o'clock hour round table up on the other side. Don't forget about the podcast out there. Yes, we'll get those podcasts up there. And, of course, you know, we don't do the Facebook Live anymore because, well, it's kind of hard to be live when you're pre-recorded. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not a uh, magic trick I've managed to figure out just quite yet when it comes to uh, doing that to be able to stay Facebook Live. And it doesn't matter anyways because I'm in Facebook jail, so I can't do anything on Facebook at all. I can't post. I can't like your stuff. I can't comment. I can't even take and uh, go Facebook Live if I wanted to. And, and even having difficulty putting the podcast up there as well. So typically you would go to, you know, Doc Bryce Productions, LLC, to get the latest podcast, but um, it's not up there. And you're like, oh my God, she's not posting the podcast. Well, it's not up there. And it is up there, but it's not up there. So if you go and look at the other platforms like Spreaker, you go to iHeart, you go to YouTube, you go to iTunes, Google Cast or Google Podcast. They're all up. It's, it's all up on those platforms except oh and even twitter too except facebook because facebook has um put me in jail until further notice i think i should be out of jail by tomorrow i hope so so uh yeah if you're looking for it it's not there just copy that rss feed though is what you really need to do and then that way no matter what happens as long as that rss feed is updated dude you you're already set you've got the latest show you don't have to worry about if I get banned on Facebook or something again and not able to uh, pick that up. So just before the break, we're talking about your uh, Arkansas Voters Guide 
for the primary that's coming up May 24th. Early election is in progress right now. You got up until the 24th of May to get your vote in. The thing is, though, is what's on the ballot? Because, I mean, when you look at this Arkansas Voters Guide, I mean, it's got everything that's going on in Arkansas. But what we need to do is we need to narrow this down to uh, what's going on here in Washington. Because we don't care about the Garlands. We don't care about the Pulaski's. We don't care about the Salines. We don't. And we don't care nothing about no unions, Calhoun, none of that stuff. We want to know what's going on right here, right here in Washtenaw County. <laughs> and the only way to do that is to get a, to get a ballot <laughs> for, uh, for the thing there. I just realized that's a Republican. Why do I have the Republican? I don't want the Republican. I want the Hang on, did I get both, or did what I get here? Did I, did I just get the one? No, it looks like I just got the one. Okay, all right. So we'll tell you about half of it then. Well, I this is why I don't like the primary because you have to pick a Republican side or a, a Democrat side, and it's like I don't want to be on any side. I just know that I want to start marking people off. And it could be on any side. So, um, see, why are they always going to make it so difficult? It's like being left-handed. You know, the world is designed for right-handed people, but you're left-handed, and so you're just like, oh, it's frustrating. Everything's got to be for right-handed people. So, anyhow, it looks like we are looking at the Republican primary election ballot. So, that's what we got to go off of here. So, that means for uh, Lieutenant Governor, our choices are Doyle Webb, Chris Baquette, Senator Jason Rapur, Greg Blisloo, Attorney General Leslie Rulich, or Judge Joseph Wood. That's going to be your choices there for LG for the state of Arkansas. Nonpartisan judicial, that's uh, state Supreme Court Associate Justice Position 6. You can only vote for one. That's going to be Supreme Court Justice Karen Baker or Judge Gunnar DeLay. You can only vote for one. On the federal side for U.S. Senate, uh, you can vote for Senator John Bozeman, Heath Loftus, Jake Baquette, or Jan Morgan. Um, like I said, this is uh, they gave me the Republican primary election ballot. So I've only got one side to go on right now. So if you're a Republican, uh, you're in luck because uh, we're covering your ballot. If you're a Democrat, uh, I'm sorry. I should have been more specific and asked for both because I was just thinking there's one ballot. And yeah, I forgot we're primary right now. It's the general election would be the one ballot, but yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it happens. Hey, I forgot once. Didn't haven't you ever forgotten something? Secretary of State, you got to vote for one there, Eddie Joe Williams, or Secretary of State John Thurston. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thurston is the incumbent. That's what I thought. That's what I was thinking. So yes, uh, and then of course we got a bunch of other ones on there as well. Uh, let's see. Then we've got your treasurer. You can uh, get Senator Matthew Pish or State Representative Mark Lowry. Uh, your AG, your choices are uh, Griffin or Leon Jones Jr. State Senate District 02. You got to vote for one. It's either Beth Calloway, James McMinnis, or Matt Stone. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, Governor. <laughs> You get two choices on the Republican side. Francis, Doc Washburn, or Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And then, of course, you know the other ones. Chris Jones uh, on the Democrat side there for that. And then the other four that we've mentioned, that, whose names I can't remember. And I'm not going to go through them again right, real quick here because we're coming up on the top here. So we're starting to run out of time. And pretty much I'm running the clock out anyways. So a nonpartisan ju judicial. You got the state Supreme Court with the associate's degree of position two. Sorry, associate justice position two. You can only vote for one though. Only one. Only one. Only one. So you got the Supreme Court associate justice Robin Wynn, or you could go with David Sterling, or you could pick uh, old Judge Chris uh, Cornyn there. And then you've got. Uh, I already told you about position six. Then you've got unopposed Republican Party candidates for U.S. Congress District Four, which is U.S. Representative Bruce Westerman. You got State Representative Sonia Barker, Treasurer of State Dennis Milligan. Then you've got Tommy Land, Tommy Land Commissioner of State Lands, State Representative District Ninety Eight Wade Andrews, Treasurer Melinda Missy Chambers, Assessor Stephanie Olds. Hey, I know her. And then you got Coroner Todd uh, McTeer. Now, this is on the um, 
This is on the Republican side. So if you want, you know, if you want McTeer, am I saying that right, McTeer? If you want him to be your corner, then you got to go grab you the uh, Republican primary election ballot. If you want it to be Smith, then you need to go grab you the Democrat primary election ballot. People made that mistake a few years back because people were saying, oh, I want to vote for that there Todd uh, McTeer. And then they realized that uh, they uh, could only vote for Smith. And they're like, wait a minute. I didn't see uh, old Todd on there anywhere. I, I got to vote for Smith. So I voted for Smith. And so, yeah, it, that's why I say you if, if you're going to go vote, go prepared and educated instead of just, you know, I'm going to vote straight ticket because you were voting straight ticket. So you grabbed a Democrat ticket and then realize that uh, you wanted to vote for your buddy McAteer there and then realize that uh, he's on the Republican ticket. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, come I can't do it. You can't. It's a primary. A lot of times that's why I don't even mess with I personally don't mess with the primary. I wait till the general election. But that's me. That's me. That's me. I'm not saying follow what I do. I'm just saying. Dale Vaughn. Dale Vaughn. That's that guy. Oh, Dale Vaughn. That's the guy. That's the name of that JP whose name I cannot remember. I didn't know that guy. I can't remember his name though. Uh <laughs> on the Republican side. If you grab a Republican ballot, your JPs for Washita County is going to be uh, number one, Rare Russell, number two, Dale Vaughn, number three, Eddie Pickett, and Chris Gill Bridge Creek Creek uh, Constable for the constable there. Uh, I've got some stuff on the constable as well. No, I don't mean like bad stuff. I mean, you know, it's a lot of people were like, what's the constable? What does the constable do? All I know, and, and you probably didn't know this either because I didn't know this either, is the constable has the ability to be able to arrest the sheriff and is the only one who can do that. Who knew? No, no, it's not. I'm sorry. That's in Texas. That's the Texas thing. The coroner is the only one in Arkansas who can do that. All right, I got to take a break. Be right back. News Talk 92, KBEU, the news and talk of South Arkansas. News Talk 92, KBEU, baby, as we are getting into the 7 o'clock hour here on this Wednesday morning. 67 degrees outside with a high of 89. Supposed to be breaking a new record and reaching 93 for a new high today. 69, it feels like out there right now. As uh, we got the round table coming up here in less than uh, 20 minutes. And not only that, but we've also got the podcast that'll be going out there later. Now, I am in Facebook jail, mind you, so I cannot post the podcast up there on Facebook until I get out of Facebook jail. However, though, I'm still posting them. You're just not finding them on Facebook because I can't post on Facebook. So you can go to Twitter. You can go to Spreaker.com. That's a speaker with an R, Spreaker. Dot com S P R E A K E R like speaker but you just put an R in there. Of course, you can find it on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, and you can also now find it on Google Podcast as well. So we're up there in all kinds of platforms and everything. So even though you don't see it right now on uh, Facebook under Doc Bryce Productions LLC, the Facebook page there, or on the Radio Works page there as well. And, and the same thing goes with all the other podcasts. Remember with, with Uncle John, or remember when with Uncle John, and of course, Trivia Tracks, those can all also be found out there on those great, amazing platforms as well. I Heart, iTunes, Spotify, and a Google Casts as well. All right, so those are all there. Just before the break, we were talking about uh, who's all on the ballots. We uh, only got a copy of the Republican one here. I have to go get one for the Democrat. Because I forgot that there's two ballots, you know. I mean, it happens. I forgot. You know, haven't you ever forgot something? I forgot something once. <laughs> and then we ended that with a constable. And it was like, well, you know, what, what exactly is a constable anyway? What does a constable do? And that's a good question, because I couldn't tell you if I tried. But um, back home, I know that a constable is can arrest a sheriff. It's the only one who can arrest a sheriff. And then when it comes to Arkansas, I found out the coroner is the only one who can arrest a sheriff. I was like, wow, okay, because, I mean, you know, corn, uh, the, uh, you know constables. And, now, and it's weird, too, because, see, constables in Texas – you know they have an you know they got an official car uh they got official gear and everything you know i mean they look like they're funded whereas here in arkansas uh from what i understand and from what i've seen it looks like uh even though because you got to remember a constable is an an elected position 
So with that, it looks like that they pretty much have to fund all their own stuff, like their own vehicles, their own little, you know, woo-woo, woo-woo lights. Can we call them woo-woo lights? <laughs> you know when they go, you know, they got to pay for that themselves. That stuff ain't cheap to get your own little, and your own little woo-woo lights and stuff and things like that. You know, not like the fire truck there. Fire truck go, woo! You know, I mean, fire truck, a lot of fun. Fire truck got more stuff on there than, no, that's not the fire truck. That's the trucker dude. There you go. That's your fire truck. <laughs> See, and then they got that horn on there. Love that horn. But my favorite is the mechanical, though. That's the one I love the most. That's the one. That's the wind-up siren. The one that goes, you know that one? Yeah. <laughs> and then it takes a while to wind down. Yes, sir. That is the mechanical. And from what I understand, they're replacing those now with electronic mechanicals. So they're mechanical in, in uh, sound. You know, as in nostalgia, but um, when it comes to the mechanical, the mechanical just isn't there anymore. It's just not there because that's the one that sits in the front that looks like a a big fan. That's the mechanical siren. In fact, uh, some of the other firemen around here didn't even know what that was. I'm just saying, you know, stuff and things. I get it. You're young. uh, They're taking away all the fun stuff, and now everything's just going digital. It's more fuel efficient. Anyhow, constables are pretty much overlooked. Nobody really thinks about them. Now I know we got some constables out there. We we do have one here. He's a great guy, and 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 I'm and I'm not not you know putting him down or anything like that. It's just you know nobody shows him any love. Everybody always talks about law enforcement officers. You know, you got your local police department, then you got your county sheriff, and then you got your stateies your stateies out there out there doing all their statey stuff, right? But everybody forgets about the little guy in between, and that's your constable, because they're overlooked. It's an elected official. Um, they're the ones who uh, pretty much established. Uh, they're they're the one. Uh, hang on, they are one of the positions established by the Arkansas Constitution. Ugh, get it out. You might actually never come in contact with one. Uh, they're mostly unpaid members, and uh, they have to supply their own stuff. Uh, some of the other roles that I've seen uh, with constables back home. Like serving papers and things like that, but uh, they are—they're kind of like the in between because they patrol townships and uh, that are smaller than cities and things like that. You know, because you got your—you got your—you have unincorporated, which would basically be some people hanging out in the county. You don't have like a municipality or anything like that. You're just strictly unincorporated, as they would call it, and your county. And then you have your towns. Your townships and things, which is, you know, little, little people out there. And then you got your cities and then you got your metropolitans and then you got your, you know, all, I mean, you know, you just kind of graduate up from there. But uh, it's the townships, the, the little the little towns out there, just just a tad smaller than a big old city. It's the in between. So, you don't. you're like, I don't want to live out in the county. But then again, you're like, I don't want to live in the city either. So you go live in a township <laughs> Well, you can have the best of both worlds. Yeah, not not much. There's not much out in the township either. You might get a Dollar General though. So uh, not to be esta- or not to be confused with established towns. The townships were legal boundaries used to establish voting precincts. So Arkansas still has townships, but not many people in Arkansas are familiar with the concept. As cities have grown, sheriff departments have expanded, and township boundaries still come into play when a community holds a vote on whether to allow alcohol sales or when voting on constables and stuff like that. So they're in the, they're the in between guy, and they're still elected. So there's been efforts to eliminate the position, but no constitutional amendment has ever been approved for the ballot either. Uh, there's there's fewer constables in Arkansas nowadays than there used to be. County judges have uh, the legal authority to reduce the number of townships, effectively reducing the number of constable positions. Several have done so, and the Arkansas Supreme Court in 2020 upheld a decision to do so in Washington County. So, you know, in terms of office, a constable serves a two-year term. Uh, Quorum Court can set their salary, but most do not allocate any funding for the position. Uh, constables pay for their equipment out of pocket, and most do not have county assistance or office space either. So uh, they're pretty much just on their own and do their own thing. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild of law enforcement, pretty much. So anyhow, what does it take to uh, be able to become a con- Oh, you want to become a constable? You're like, oh, that sounds like that sounds like something for me. I want to do that. Well, to be eligible, one, you have to be a U.S. citizen. 
Two, you have to be at least 18 years old. Three, you've got to be registered to vote in the county of the township that you're wanting to run in. Uh, you can't have any fraud or felony convictions. And that's pretty much it. You don't really have to have any like law enforcement stuff, you know, background or anything like that. No. You just be like, you know what? I don't want to be a cop, but uh, I can be a constable. I don't have to go through all the training like cop does. Um, not, not disqualifying or discounting what a constable is. Because, I mean, even for sheriff, you can run, anybody can run for sheriff. You don't even have to have a background in law enforcement. You just, you just say, you know what? Today I want to be a sheriff. I'm going to run for sheriff. You know what? I'm coming for you, Norwood. Here I come. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and, 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 and you can. You can do that if you want to. I mean, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to, to uh, win. I mean, if you're going up against Norwood, everybody knows Norwood's record. I mean, he's law. I mean, Norwood is law. And he's got a background for it. And so, I mean, compare will be like, say, like if uh, Bo Woody went up against David Norwood. See, then, you know, because, I mean, you know, Woody's got, you know, experience as a police chief and, you know, Norwood would be the incumbent. So, I mean, you'd have a fair fight right there. So, uh, you know, it'd be a matter of, uh, you know, who's more popular. <laughs> it'd be a popularity contest. But say, like, I went up against Norwood. I have no law background or anything like that. But, you know, I can run for sheriff if I want If I want to. I mean, I qualify. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm at least 18 years old. And uh, I'm registered to vote in the county and uh, the township that I'm in. And so if I wanted to uh, put my name on the ballot, I'd pay the fees and everything. And then I could say, vote for Doc Bryce for uh, Washtenaw County Sheriff. And then I go up against Norwood. Now, the challenge is going to be Norwood's going to, you know, basically just wash me out because, well, he's got the experience. He's got proven results and he's law. Whereas me, I'm like, yeah, you know, y'all could just vote for me because you like me. Y'all like me. I mean, I'm a nice guy and everything. Remember how we used to have fun on the radio? <laughs> we could still have fun as your sheriff. And nobody's going to vote for me. <laughs> Because they're going to go with what the, they're going to go with somebody who's got the experience. Though. But like I said, anybody can run for sheriff, but it would be an unfair fight because Norwood's got the experience. He's got the backing and um, he's he's just got what it takes to be sheriff and people know his work. So me, everybody's like, oh, God, we got to vote for that idiot off the right. Nah, man, you know, what? I'm just going to go with what's already there. I'm just going to stick. <laughs> I'm just going to stick. With, I'm not switching horses yet. But if it were, you know, if it were Bo Woody up against David Norwood, then then you've got a really good fight on your hands because, I mean, you, you got, you know, Woody could sit there and say, you know, I've been chief for this long and I've been in law enforcement for that long and I've worked over at the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office before and I've done this and I've done that. And uh, Norwood, uh, he's OK. He's all right. I like him. He's OK. But I want his job, you know, and then Norwood would be like, well, that Bo Woody, I tell you, uh, he don't he's city folk. He don't know nothing about county. All he knows is city stuff. We need somebody in office who knows what county stuff is, you know, country folk. <laughs> see, and now you see now you got just people going, hmm, I am country. I do like, I'm a country boy, so I guess I'm going to go with uh, Norwood. Or, you know, so we've got, well, you know, I do like the arts and the nightlife and everything, and I do love living in a city, so, you know, maybe it'd be better if Woody was the sheriff. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, <laughs> could compare the two would be, would be more fair than trying to compare me to Norwood to run for sheriff. But like I said, anybody could run for the office. So anyhow, uh, with a constable, though, they get the two-year term. Um, they're, they answer to, uh, the quorum court and, uh, quorum court can set their pay, but typically they don't have pay and they got to pay for everything out of, out of pocket and stuff. So, uh, like I said, that's why they're typically, you know, looked at as the uh, redheaded stepchild of law enforcement because they're pretty much on their own. So, uh, uh, 07 law, however, placed training requirements of constables. So if they wanted to carry a gun on duty, they have access to the Arkansas Crime Information Center. State law also requires them to wear uniforms while on duty and label any patrol vehicle with the Arkansas constable sticker on there. And they're not required to put sneaky and mean on there, but they are required to turn over any fines collected from collections to the citations to the county. Under state law, they no longer have authority to appoint deputies. Uh, they're also, they are required to keep records of any citations and administrative records similar to requirements placed on uh, sheriffs. 
And so in Arkansas, the constable position is a partisan race on the ballot. That means there there may be a Democrat or a Republican candidate wanting that position. A primary is meant to reduce the number of candidates associated with the political play until there is only one candidate from each party to choose from to, you know, in a latter race like in November. So uh, that's that's what this primary thing is all about. We're, we've got all these people that want to run for these positions. And in the primary, that's what we're doing. We're weeding everybody out and we're trying to get it down to one candidate for each party. Yeah, I'm not going to say just Democrat and Republican because you've got independent in there. You've got libertarian. You've got green party. You've got uh, no party. So we need to have one candidate from each party to represent that party come November. So that's what the primary is all about. And then um, that's what the constable does. So the constable just pretty much patrols townships and things like that. And uh, they typically don't get paid for the position. If they do, that's a blessing. And um, they just kind of hang around and do stuff, constable stuff. And uh, how exciting. There you go. (laughs) So if you ever wondered what a constable is, I hope we answered your question. All right, we've got to take this break. We've got the round table up next. I don't know who's coming in for the round table today. Don't forget to get the podcast when it comes in. It'll be available uh, later today. And, of course, you can get your other favorite co- podcasts up there as well for our other shows. News Talk 92, KBU, the news and talk of South Arkansas.